What's going on, guys? We are here to break down. Uh, it's day three of NFL free agency, and actually the first legal day uh, starts in 20 minutes uh, for the end of the legal tampering period and the beginning of uh, the official start of the new year. So we are here. We made it through the offseason. Thank God it was only a month. Um, but we are now officially into the new year as in 20 minutes, probably by the time this video uploads. So here are the things that the Colts did. The Colts have re-signed so many of their, their players still. Um, as of the, the most recent free agent tracker um, says here, the um, unrestricted free agents that they have continued, unrestricted free agents signed Grover Stewart, Tyquan Lewis, Michael Pittman, Rigoberto Sanchez, and Kenny Moore. All pillars of this team. Uh, unrestricted free agents signed from other teams is Roquan Davis. Still only one there. Restricted free agents signed and retendered. Uh, we have Jack Anderson, the center. Uh, and we'll get into all this. We'll break it down even more. Uh, and there's still plenty of guys that have been tendered or re-signed. Um, so there's a lot to talk about. A lot of things that I think are really good. And obviously the franchise tag was only applied to uh, one player. But the Colts did lose some people. Uh, some free agents that they didn't get to re-sign. Some guys that maybe we would have liked to see re-sign. So we want to talk about that and then also break down some remaining free agents that the Colts can go after. And then one final surprise, uh, there is a, a star running back that is interested in joining the Colts and the Colts are on one of his three shortlist teams. So what's going on, guys? That's a, a long intro. Uh, my name is Elijah. I'm from Sports Talk Indy, uh, where we cover all things Colts. We post videos daily, uh, daily on all things Colts and Colts news. So excited to have you. Uh, if you would like and subscribe, and be sure to to continue following along. Like I said, we'll continue posting daily uh, on all things going on in the Colts. Uh, the good, the bad, the ugly, all of it. And comment below. You guys have not been shy on commenting. I love it. Uh, comment below how bad my takes are or if you agree or maybe some things you'd like to see different. Uh, and I'll try and respond to as many of those as possible. So breaking down uh, some of the guys that the Colts have signed. We went over this a few times, but they re-signed Grover Stewart. Those were unrestricted free agents. Tyquan Lewis, Michael Pittman, Rigoberto Sanchez, and Kenny Moore. And as of today, this is actually not updated all the way because the Colts just signed uh, safety Ronnie Harrison uh, to another deal. So I think they signed him to a one-year deal um, worth maybe like two or three million. It was not not a very big deal at all. So, uh, and then they they added some more defensive depth in Roquan Davis. Um, so those are the the unrestricted free agents they signed. And they did get to bring back center Jack Anderson, which um, you know may not seem like a big deal to a lot, um, but I really think that Jack Anderson provides depth in the center position. Ryan Kelly has been a staple of this offense, and so I think to be able to add some depth behind him, maybe some insurance just in case uh, something happens. Ryan Kelly did miss some time last year and, and some more time the year before, so it, it's you know it, it may not seem like a big deal, but I do think it is it is uh, a lot for the Colts to be able to add that. So. That's the, the signings, now that we've recapped that. Now let's go to some of the remaining free agents that the Colts should target, in my opinion. Uh, and some of these are big names. Some of these, you know, would probably be way too far out there for the Colts, but we can dream. We can hope that Ballard will actually make, uh, will make a move. So the first one that I want to talk about uh, that has shown interest in the Colts, the Colts are now listed as a shortlist um, for free agent A.J. Dillon. The Packers have just released Aaron Jones. They just signed Josh Jacobs, so they are revamping this running back room. For good or for ill, I think it's a poor move. I liked Aaron Jones. I, I thought it was kind of you know crummy of them to ask Aaron Jones to take a pay cut only to sign uh, Josh Jacobs. We're not here to cover Packers news, but that's my opinion on it. It's kind of kind of sleazy the way they did it. Um, but among others, they are they uh, also are with AJ Dillon. AJ Dillon is not interested in re-signing with the Packers but has listed the Giants, the Colts, and the Cowboys as a short list. Now, here's why I think the Colts are the best of that option. The Giants have spent big money already in free agency and clearly are in this weird rebuild mode. They're going to be releasing Daniel Jones. I cannot imagine that they're going to be signing another running back. They just signed uh, Devin Singletary, uh, and they've signed a few other pieces, and also they're just kind of in this weird place. So there's one. There's the Giants. I think the Giants are off the table on that. And the Cowboys. The Cowboys allegedly were all in this offseason. And if you've seen the tweet from Skip Bayless, uh, where it was a very important place, comma, I'll leave it at that. Search it. You'll find it. Uh, the Cowboys were all in. And they are the only team remaining to have yet to make a single roster transaction since the season end. They have not made a single one. They have not resigned anyone. They have not extended an offer to anyone. They have not done a single thing. 
why would you start at A.J. Dillon? But I think that A.J. Dillon would be a really good move for the Colts. And here's why. The Colts don't have anyone behind Jonathan Taylor. Anyone I've mentioned, I should say. They don't really have anyone that, I think Jordan Wilkins is still on the team, but they don't really have anyone. And Jonathan Taylor has shown that he's great, but he also needs some time. He can't be in every play. And we all know what happened. We all remember the last play that ended the Colts season. A lack of running back depth. Now, Zach Moss is gone. Zach Moss has signed with the bagel, Bengals. Hate that, but I love it for Zach Moss. He's such a, it's such a cool comeback story. Uh, you know, was with the Bills, didn't get a shot there, got a shot with Indy, balled out. I mean, just had an incredible season. And then obviously he got his due uh, and is now playing with, with Joey Burrow uh, in the Cincinnati Bengals. So I love that for Zach Moss, but we need someone. Now, here's why I think A.J. Dillon would be a perfect match for the Colts. A.J. Dillon has a nickname that has followed him for a while. He's known as the quad father. The dude is massive, and he is really, really good in these short yard-to-gain situations. Jonathan Taylor is explosive, but oftentimes is, is typically considered smaller. But he's very quick. But I think A.J. Dillon would provide that power back that we need in these short third-and-one situations um, that I think would really benefit the Colts. A.J. Dillon's also not, you know... It's not like he's a bad running back at all. He has, uh, last season, as a backup running back, he has 613 rushing yards, which is, I I would say, like a a pretty decent season, all things considering. But even as a backup, to have 613 yards is really good. I also think that this is, because there's such a market for running backs, I think this would be a good move for the Colts all around. So that's one that's remaining that has shown interest in playing for the Colts. There are still some big-name free agents out there. We're in day three, and I know a lot of people have been kind of, uh, you know, hoping that Ballard will make a move and, and all this, and a lot of people have said that if he doesn't make a move this season, he's done. He's out. But there's some big names out there that, that still fill in some weak spots. Justin Simmons is still available. Now, there's reports coming in uh, that Justin Simmons will likely sign with the Eagles, but it's not a done deal yet, and he's had conversations with the Colts that have been reported. Um, but there's some people in that role, but there's also some quite a few wide receivers. Marquise Brown is still available. That would be some dominant speed that would help the Colts. Chase Young is still available. Um, Jadavian Clowney is still available. Quandre Diggs is still available. I mean, there's some people that have been just kind of like shuffled aside that I think the Colts would still be very wise to at least entail a conversation. There's also another one that I think that we've forgot how dominant this player can be. Stephon Gilmore is still available and has at least expressed somewhat interest being reported around that he would not be opposed to reunite uh, to reunite in Indy. I think this would provide a lot of really good core uh, age and maturity that could come into this very young DB team. Um, Jordan Whitehead still available. I do think he just got re-signed. I think I think uh, this I think he got re-signed like maybe 20 minutes ago. But that being said, Jordan Whitehead not available. Jordan Fuller, Fuller is still available. Um, let's keep going down this list. I'm, I'm only looking at people who are, who are available that would fit the Colts need. I mean, there's quite a few defensive tackles. We've signed two this off season and we still have DeForest Buckner. Um, Quez Watkins is still available. Curtis Samuel. I mean, you talk about a good, uh, not yet old wide receiver. That would be a really good option. Uh, you know, I'd love to see Curtis Samuel come in on, on a good deal for the Colts. Um, so there's still quite a few options. There's still quite a few people available in the cornerback and wide receiver that I think the Colts would be wise to target. Uh, KJ Osborne is still available. I do think that we're still hoping and we're still holding out hope, crossing our fingers, you know, whatever, that Ballard will make a good signing and will be able um, to sign this. You know, if it's AJ Dillon, if that's our biggest signing of the offseason, I will be a little disappointed. I'm not going to lie. But I'm not yet calling for Ballard's head. And here's why I think the Colts have been doing what they're doing. The Colts saw a culture shock last season, something that was completely different from the ordinary. Jeff Saturday had a report when he was on the Pat McAfee show a couple months ago that when he got there, the culture was so dysfunctional. People wouldn't eat together. Last year, we saw what we hope to see in the future, which is that a culture revitalization in Indianapolis. I think that this could be a really good move for the Colts. I think that the Colts are wanting to keep the same guys around, at least to an extent, to keep this culture going, to keep building off of the foundations of this, because it's not just one player, it's not just one thing. So I think they're looking at this and saying, can we keep a culture going? 
I, I hope so. I think it would be great. Um, but I think that, in my opinion, that's probably why the Colts haven't been super explosive in free agency, as we hoped that they would be. But again, it's not over. And there's still quite a bit of free agents left um, and a, quite a bit of defensive backs left. I mean, I, I think we're all holding out still that Justin Simmons will be will be signed. Calvin Ridley's one I didn't even mention. Calvin Ridley's still available, and that would be a dominant wide receiver to pair up opposite side of Michael Pittman, give Josh Downs the slot, or, or vice versa, however you want to work that. I think that would be an incredible signing by the Colts. Um, so there's a lot of things to hope for. A lot still to come. We literally just are entering into the beginning of free agency. So I'm not I'm not losing hope yet. And I would ask Colts fans, hold out hope. It's not over yet. Uh, there's still a lot of free agents that I think would benefit the Colts significantly. And if that's A.J. Dillon, what is Justin Simmons, whatever that looks like, I'm excited. I think we all should be excited. And it, it shows that the Colts are going to target some, hopefully some explosive players uh, in the draft coming this year. So thank you for watching. Like I said, if you like what we're doing, like and subscribe, turn on the notification bell, uh, and we'll be posting daily. So we'll see you on the next one.